Hi, this is Paul Christopher Hoppy, a.k.a. Zen Madman, here with the Superhero Ethics Podcast. With me, as always, is Matthew Westfox, the founder of Superhero Ethics. And today, we're going to talk about stuff. Uh, <laughs> well put. We don't have a real clear plan, but hopefully uh, no men with guns will show up at anyone's <laughs> door this time. That Spoiler was alert for anyone so listening to last week's fun. episode. <laughs> Anybody who's not yet. If they're listening to last week's episode at the same time they're listening to this, I'm impressed. That, that, I have that, to say. That would be a superhero. That person should definitely contact us. But yeah, for this week, uh, I'm Matthew. Uh, Matthew S. Fox. Welcome, everybody. Uh, and this week, we're going to be doing kind of a um, grab bag style. Um, there's a couple of smaller topics we were thinking about talking about. So we'll just sort of bounce around and see where the conversation takes us. Um, and it'll probably last either 20 minutes or three hours. <laughs> I, I'm given past history Neither. closer Neither. to the three, but hopefully we're going to cut off. Is, is at there about a Jets game? Um, is there a Jets game? We don't talk about anymore. Oh, that's just very too, good. That's just too. All right. Um, so speaking of people who could listen to two things at once. Um, well, actually, I was going to say, do you, you want to first, by the way, give our listeners who are concerned a bit of an update about our special guest uh, for for last week's podcast? Not really. I mean, everything was fine, okay. although it was kind of scary, and <laughs> I think I was rather subdued after that point in the podcast, just because, um, hmm. The, the point yeah. being that the police the police visit didn't actually have anything to do with our podcast. That was just a crazy... Correct. But that, we I hope. Mean, yeah, no, it, it didn't. <laughs> actually, there was... Apparently, someone was screaming in another apartment, um, and so someone called the cops, and they went to the wrong apartment. Uh-huh. And which makes me concerned for whoever was screaming. That that's a legitimate concern. Uh, and it was a thoroughly unpleasant experience. And I, gu- I guess I won't say what my mom wanted to say, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it, yeah, she's uh, doesn't have uh, the highest opinion of law enforcement officials. <laughs> she was a child of the '60s, you know. Or, that, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Then. So yeah. Cool. Okay, so Paul, what are we talking about this week? Right. So speaking of people with superpowers, um, there uh, we we had a, a user comment or a user, user. That's, <laughs> listener, that's not a, listener, a, a listener, fan, listener, a yeah, listener, yeah, um, or actually maybe just somebody who was on Facebook and just commented on a thread. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but whoever you are, you're now podcast famous. Right. Um, was was talking about like the. The pros and cons of like making Superman power a huge dynamo battery bank solving world energy or, you know, building roads and, and whatnot um, using superpowers. And I, I thought we could kind of I mean, at some point we could do a whole episode on that. But uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't phrase it like making Superman do such and, you know, whatnot. But like, why doesn't he? And the thing, though, is like he does. Uh I mean, there are a lot of examples of superheroes using it. Like, they, they always have the, like, you know, oh, there's a fire. My baby! Someone save my baby! You know? <laughs> like, and the superhero runs into a burning building or Superman's getting cats out of trees, you know? Um, and in, I guess in the Avengers, like, Tony Stark is making some kind of clean energy thing using his thing that runs his heart. I don't know. Right. Um, but, like... Yeah, talking about, you know, um, what I, superpowers for real-life non-crime-fighting applications. Can you think of any examples? Yeah, I mean, I, I, think, I think it definitely is a great question, and I want to thank the, um, Carol. I'm Carl. Not, Carl. Carl. Um, I'm not going to try and pronounce this person's last name. Yeah. Um, but, but, Carl, I, I really appreciate the question, and thank you for writing it. Um, and, and I think it's interesting because I think it's a place where, you, you know, yeah, there's a lot of the things that I think about where when superheroes have some of these powers – they generally use them either, like you said, to, you know, rescue a baby from a tree, or but when it is more of the like, oh, I have the power to, you know, do something with with pow- with you know, generating power or something like that. It's almost always shown as a response to some supervillain's evil plan, right? Actual- or even just some random like something's gone wrong, like a firefighter would would right. Do. There's a natural right. disaster kind of, you know, yeah. you know, I mean, there's, um, you know, and and I think I think this is where. The fact that super the superhero stories come to us, you know, as stories through media, through television and comic books and movies, it, it you know, Superman deciding to to provide global power for the world doesn't generally make as good a story as stopping Lex Luthor. 
Um, well, there's not a lot of conflict. I mean, there could be. Right. All the oil companies could be sending armed guards to try and stop it. <laughs> <laughs> no, come on. We don't live in a world where oil companies would do something like that. That's, You're right. That would never happen. That's a role-playing game. That's Shadowrun. Um, but yeah, but I mean, like, okay, I, I will admit, I never saw the cinematic genius that was Superman 4, um, in which Superman tries oh, yeah. to, to take I did. on. Yeah, I, I've heard it's quite bad. But, you know, he, he tries to take on the whole nuclear power. You know the the whole nuclear weapons issue by like yeah. deep you know removing nuclear weapons from um has some negative side effects but 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 I think yeah if if we could think of superheroes outside of that need to have conflict to tell a story there's a lot of things that I think you know you, you sort of think about what what could a superhero do with those powers you know I mean right. um what could a concerned citizen do with those powers basically right well and and, and in some ways um you know Superman there's just so many examples like. There's an extent to which once Superman exists, like, there really shouldn't ever be hurricanes, you know? They're, like, natural disasters stop happening. Um, mm. And it – I will say this. There, there's an extent to which it, it's one of the – this might be a little bit of a digression, but it, it's often one of the things that bothers me a little bit once they start to give superheroes so much power that it seems without limits. Mm -hmm. You know, in the first Superman movie, the the Christopher Reeve movie, he literally has the power to go back in time – to you know, to – <laughs> to, to, to spin to, the earth backwards right which somehow to, changes time to reverse which... the, yeah okay the physics are not exactly the best um, not exactly <laughs> this, you know. but it's then again it's never been tried hey hey listen listen it's still no, it's <laughs> there it's, are it, it is the christopher reeve superman of my youth it cannot be critiqued well, well until we get to the third uh, or fourth until movie. we get to four but <laughs> but, but the point being Maybe like three. <clears throat> once he has that power why isn't he using it anytime anything bad happens in the world ever? You know, right. like to me, that's off as much the question, not as much just like what can they do with these powers. But once we see that they have those powers, you now have to ask yourself, what are all the times that they're not using those powers? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that is a very interesting ethical issue. I mean, I imagine like most of them have to sleep some, and <laughs> you know, so. I, but it, I, that's one thing actually in. Um, in the Justice League animated series, there's rarely all seven main characters in a given episode. Right. And actually, the first episode features Superman dismantling all the nuclear weapons in the world and being like, yeah, no, no, I'll I'll take care of it. You know, <laughs> like, whatever <laughs> happens, I'll take care of it. And of course, right then, there's an alien invasion. Right. But, um, but for the for the most part... There won't be all of the characters there, and they'll be like, "Oh, where's Wonder Woman? Oh, she's dealing with an earthquake in in Haiti, you know, or like, oh, what's where's Superman? He's, ca you know, and they'll cut to him like trying to catch a falling plane or something." And, right, and they, they, they sort of imply that the characters are doing those things, but but even there, yeah, but they're just not making them central plots because right conflict, you know. Even there, you still have the characters responding to prevent a disaster of some kind. Right. I, I think what, what Carl was asking is something actually a little different, which is could the superheroes use their power in a more affirmative way? You know, not right. I'm going to wait for an oil spill, but actually like how about if I just volunteer to like carry oil tankers across the ocean, mm -hmm. which Superman could do presumably pretty easily. Um, and thus – Yeah, al although you're still then burning oil and uh... – <laughs> Well, right, but but like, there's better ways to, but but yeah, the the point is is doing, um, like, proactively doing, re, you know, relatively mundane things with their superpower. Well, not necessarily mundane, but like directly constructive acts as opposed to preventative or, right. um, you know, tr trying to as opposed to responding to I, things. I mean, we, in, in this country right now, we're talking constantly about the infrastructure crisis. You know. Um, I've never quite understood how this works, but we've, we've established a couple times that like super Superman's laser vision can basically seal cracks in like steel and concrete. Um, so yeah, that, I get that for steel concrete. What can you melt the concrete and then it, I mean, he's rocks. done it. It's never quite well, explained, but like, yeah. but yeah, so Superman could theoretically like take a month and just solve the infrastructure crisis in this country of bridges and tunnels, like right. not going to make a great movie, but yeah, pretty interesting use of Superman's powers. Although here's a here's a question: If Superman goes around doing all of these things, right, basically doing at super speed jobs that a bunch of people have, now how do those people get work? Yeah, I mean that's that's right. Uh, I mean one argument for for doing 
um, huge public works projects, right? Doing, you know, um, rebuilding America's crumbling infrastructure. That's like the catchphrase, right? Right. Um, yeah, it's the shovel-ready I mean, projects. They're, they're projects right. people can start working on. Exactly. You put money into people's pockets and while having them do things that are constructive for everybody, literally constructive in the case of building things. Um, well, and, and and, I, go ahead. Well, yeah, ju- just that, like, that, you know, I mean, that kind of goes along with, like, machines taking people's jobs, right? right. Well, and, like, and going think, and checking out at the, the automatic cashier. Which I hate, by the way, but, like... I, I think uh, it's great. Well, yeah, I was going to say, like, I, I, I was posting recently about how much I hate it, and then a couple of my introvert friends were like, this actually makes going to the store a lot more easy for me. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, that makes sense. Um, well, I mean, it just makes checking out faster. I mean, it should. Not for me. <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> I'm technologically It depends on your relationship with machines and technology. <laughs> And also how well they function. I mean, sometimes every now and then you get one that functions fairly poorly. Yeah, but. That, there's a whole other podcast there. But but no, I think – and it's interesting because, uh, you know, as I've said before, I, I have a, a religious ethics uh, <clears throat> background – religious background in ethics. I used to be a pastor. Um, and one of, the, one of the issues that we talk about in the religious world a lot – is this question called theodicy, which, which it, it's sort of the idea of the odyssey, not the odyssey. Yes, right? exactly. Not, yeah. not, I mean, the odyssey is a book that gets talked about as well, but theodicy, T H E O I D wrong, but no, yeah. it starts with a th is the point. Yeah. Um, but the, <laughs> the idea of it is if you have a God who is all powerful, who can do anything and a God who is theoretically also all loving, why do bad things ever happen? Right. Um, and, and and people have wrestled with this question in all sorts of different ways, and some you know just ignore the question, or some like twist it around philosophically. To me, some of the more interesting explorations I think are ones where it's about that um, the, the idea that 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 if if some higher power, however you want to describe it, was was fixing everything, then yeah, okay, we wouldn't have anything bad, but we wouldn't ever have the chance to do anything good. You know, it, it, it's it's the important how free will plays into it and all that. And, Mm-hmm. That's a, a much longer conversation. I'm not going to try and get into here, but the point is here. I think you kind of have a similar thing with Superman, um, with with any of these su- Superman, especially because Superman, I think, is the most clearly messianic, godlike, both in his powers, but also just in the way he's positioned. I feel like this is the point to interject that uh, Zack Snyder <laughs> and Lex Luthor discuss this exact topic this- in the wonderful film Batman versus Superman. <laughs> Clearly one of our favorites. Um, sure. But but no, you're right. And I, I, I will say I thought that was kind of an interesting part of that movie because – but because it, I think it kind of raises the topic we're talking about now of is there, an, is there a reason for Superman to hold back on using his powers you right. know, in order to not just be, – because at, at some point – like what the thing you said at the beginning about – or not at the beginning but a little while ago about at the beginning of Justice League where um, – Superman just kind of unilaterally decides to get rid of all the nuclear weapons. Well, it's not unilateral, but well, that's what I'm trying to remember. Is do, do the governments of the world ask him to? Yeah, do yeah. That? It's uh, he he shows up at the UN and they sort of and they're like, Superman's going to take away all the nuclear weapons and handle all our problems. Oh, that's Yay! right. And then aliens involved invade. Right. Okay. Yeah. So it's not it's not like Justice Lord stuff where he's doing it without right. their permission. Yeah. But it is still some element of you know the problems of the rest of the world just saying Superman will fix everything. Hmm. So um, let, uh, I want to ask you actually about a, a, a different example if I can, but on the same question. Yeah. So Bruce Wayne says to himself, I have billions of dollars and I want to fight crime. Is there a way he could be using his money more effectively to fight crime? Yeah. So it's funny because that's actually the first thing I've listed on my little text doc of things <laughs> to talk about. That There's that meme about, you know um, – you know, if Bruce Wayne's a you know a billionaire and blah blah blah, why does he dress up in a cape and go around trying to stop petty criminals? And it's like, well, okay, the stopping petty criminals is like a very early Batman kind of thing, right? right? Um, he he lives in a world where there are just absolutely batshit insane supervillains <laughs> going around trying to destroy the city every single season. Right. If it were a TV show, you know. <laughs> Uh, I mean, Arrow is basically based off of Batman, right? right? I mean, the TV show is very, very much. You have this billionaire who, you know, decides to be a vigilante, and every single year, someone tries to destroy the city, and and so I I think there's a little bit of a a false, you know, it's like 
it seems like a lot of things are the same in those worlds as they are in, in our world. But, right. Um, but a lot of things are not, you know, it right. would be like, like in, in the real world, people are, so many people are so afraid of terrorism. And I mean, I have no idea what would actually be happening if there were zero efforts to, to stop it. Uh -huh. But the, you know, the world we live in is not that world where half the city gets torn down every, you know, six months or whatever. Right. Well, um, but even to take that, I mean, because where I was going to kind of go with this, which I, I think you're sort of on the same idea is, you know, listen, it, in our world, for example, if you wanted to really fight crime, you know, a great way to do that is to take your billions of dollars and, like, invest in better schools and, inve like, invest in the kind of economic conditions that make, right. you know, that make crime prevalent because we, we yeah. know that there are direct correlations there. Um, and I think you're right. I think in Bruce Wayne's world that isn't quite – but, like, how about you spend some more money on the security system at Arkham? Like, just yeah, well, one example. Like, sure, sure, you, you know, like, I mean, even even in that world, because I do think you're right. I think there is, like, the, there's more of an impetus. But but I do think, like, honestly, if we're literally looking at, like, dollar for dollar, how could Bruce Wayne best fight crime? There's still probably better ways than paying for all the toys. Sure. But at the same time, and the reason that I find this not not that you brought it up and to, to call it a load of crap, but the, the <laughs> meme itself, you know, it, right. is that – I mean, he is a philanthropist, right? He is constantly funding orphanages and stuff like that and, um, you know, trying to f fight corporate injustice. There are, um, you know, crossover things with Batman, you know, with Bruce Wayne and Lex Luthor, like talking about working together on various corporate deals or whatever. And it generally ends with Bruce Wayne being like, nah, you know, right? <laughs> like, we're not we're not going to do that. And um and so I think in better tellings of of Batman, ones that have a little more Bruce Wayne in them, um, they usually do have like yeah he's this you know playboy you know um, philanderer or whatever, but he's also a philanthropist and he's also going around trying to do good things with his company and and sometimes you know things like Arkham. It's like obviously if you had great security at Arkham you'd have a shorter series of fiction, right? Right. I mean, I, I think it, it, a lot of this comes down to... the doesn't kill his villains, really. I mean, that's one of the reasons. <laughs> I mean, a lot of like... this comes down to the versions we get are, right. are not going to be the best stories, you know? If, yeah. if, if there was a psychiatrist who could really, like... Let's not even go into curing Joker, but, like, you know, who could cure some of these other ones right. or just had good enough locks on the damn door at Arkham yeah. <laughs> that once you get in, you stay in... Um, yeah, I think I think that would make more sense, but it wouldn't be as, as good. It wouldn't be as good of a story. So I understand why it's not what we get. But I think if 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 the question is kind of like what could these people be better doing with their superpowers, you know that that's where I start to think with Bruce. Like you're right, there is all the philanthropy stuff that that is talked about. But what I what I've never seen him do, because um, I think you're right, it just doesn't make the story. But is is that kind of specifically saying if what I'm trying to do is to stop crime, how can I actually use my money? You know, is my money best spent by buying all of these toys and the cave right. and all that? Or would my money be better spent, you know, because one thing I actually love about Batman is that they spend a lot of time showing you the backstory of these villains. And and most yeah. of those times, the backstory of those villains come from pretty terrible situations. Mm -hmm. And often it has to do with, you know, a vat of acid or things like that. But like, there's still, right. there's elements to which, you know, like, if there's a better healthcare system in Gotham, does Doctor Freeze happen? You know, like j j just kind of things like that. Sure, and yeah, I think there are you know um, things that people can do with um, huge amounts of money that make the world a better place. Um, right. This leads into my uh, <laughs> discussion of Elon Musk. Okay, go for it. You know, the uh, one of the founders of PayPal who. Then started Tesla and uh, SpaceX and Solar City, uh -huh. um, and basically, you know, apparently in in college or whatever was like, okay, what what things are going to shape the future of of humanity, right? And right. one was like being able to pay for things easily online. So he's like, okay, well, this is the easiest of these things to do. So I'll start with that, um, and the easiest to kind of make money out of, right? right? Um, so they did that, and then he took some of his billions and. Put I think a hundred million dollars into SpaceX, which was like, um, you know, we need to be able to go to Mars to to leave the planet eventually because eventually, I mean, it's it the planet will eventually kick humans off of it, right? You know, 
or rather the sun will kick humans off of Earth. Um, but that's a long time in the future, um, whereas in the shorter run, there is uh, an energy crisis and a climate crisis. And so that's where, you know, Tesla and, and Solar City come in using more renewable energy. And um, there, in the first week, I think, of the Colbert taking over um, for Letterman on the, the Late Show, he interviewed Elon Musk. I think it's actually he's the like, Tonight so, Show, but yeah, anyway, go ahead. It's not the Tonight Show. Okay. Um, the Tonight Show is is Jimmy Fallon taking over for. Oh no, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Go on. Go on. Um, and and he's like, so you know, some many people have called you the real life Tony Stark, um, because like you're a billionaire who goes around trying to you know do good things or whatever, and and you know in the Avengers, Tony Stark does go and try to use his his energy right, at right. his energy technology to try to power the world with clean energy, which, you know, that would be great. Mm -hmm. I mean, or you could create a, a artificial intelligence robot that tries to destroy it. Either way, Oops. you know, either way, you can do <laughs> either thing or both, you know, but um, or save it from aliens. That's important, too. But so he's like, so are you a superhero or a supervillain? And then at the end of it, he's <laughs> like, so. So, you know, but, war, you know, Mars, you want to move to Mars or take get people to Mars, but it's cold there. And it's like, and Musk is like, yeah, well, it is, you know, quite inhospitable, but we can warm it up. And <laughs> there's a slow way and the fast way. And Colbert's like, so, so what's the fast way? He's like, well, you drop thermonuclear weapons over the poles. <laughs> and of course, Colbert's like, I'm going to say you're a super villain. <laughs> but like, it's, you know. I mean, people like Warren Buffett and Bill and Melinda Gates, like they have huge amounts of money, which means they have huge amounts of power and they are using that money to try to improve the world for everybody, right. basically. Well, and, and that's not new. And, and I mean, there's huge yeah. debates we can get into. I mean, you know, like um, you look at like how many universities are, are, or like, you know, institutions are named after people like Rockefeller or Carnegie right. Mellon, you know, it's and, and yeah, it was. And, and, I was working an event where Michael Bloomberg had donated three hundred million dollars to uh, Johns Hopkins, and they they named some part of it after him. Right, um, and that brings his total to one point five billion dollars. And, well, and yeah, but, so all these things. But are, where, yeah. where I was going with those specifically is, and I I, I think it's Carnegie Mellon. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure. If, no, I'm sorry, Andrew Carnegie. Um, yeah. one of the people who founded Carnegie Mellon. I think right. he was the one who Probably said this. With but Ellen. you know, I mean, most of those people. Um, are referred to in history books today as the robber barons. I mean, these were, right. were people who were pretty horrible in the things they did to make money. And and I, I, I like I said, I think it's uh, Andrew Carnegie. I'm not sure, but one of them was pretty famous for saying, like, look, if if you use your money to do good things, then that sort of ethically justifies all the terrible things you did to make your money. You know, um, mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and that's not a quote. That's a general idea. But I but I so I think that yeah that that. that um, there's some really, and I, I think today we don't see that quite as much. Although perhaps um, Steve, uh, some people might have said similar about uh, Bill Gates for sure. Um, sure. But yeah, but I, I think so, so. There's a whole other question there about the billionaires, um, you know, how they get their money versus how they're using it. But I, I, I do think it's interesting looking at like who are the Bill, who who are the Bruce Waynes in our world today, you know? Yeah. Um, and who are the Lex Luthers? <laughs> yes. And, and 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 where is there, like we can look at those two as like two poles, but there's a lot of people that are probably somewhere in the middle. Some. Um, right. Though I do continue to think that Warren Buffett in the Batman costume, because um, I know you have a, a deep fondness for Elon Musk, and I think for good reason. Myself, especially after that recent letter to Donald Trump, um, Warren Buffett's my hero, and you know, yeah, I, I mean, I, I want I'm some, with you. I want up some super. The... <laughs> I want some super serum that can help his like seventy year old body do the do the stuff. But like, I, if we can get that, I'm down. Yeah, you, you kind of lost me at, in the bat suit. But... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so um. But okay, yeah, that's Superman and Batman. Are there any other heroes we can think of who like um, we, we could, could could be using their powers in different ways to to help humanity? Well, so I actually have one who does um, from the show Heroes, um, Peter Petrelli, who ends up, I guess, spoiler alert, I don't know. Well, um, heroes being a couple of years old and not having seen it, can you give a actual thirty second like what are his powers? Yeah, so so Heroes is a show where you know regular humans start to develop powers right i mean it's it's basically like the x-men yep. um in terms of the basic you know premise of people develop powers and people try and manufacture powers so other people can have them and it's like what do people do with their powers right um 
and you know some of them try to save the world some of them try to blow everything up or maybe they don't try to there's there's you know it it borrows from a lot of different stories and kind of puts those elements into um, one plot. I think the first season was pretty awesome. And then there was a writer strike in the second season, blah, 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 blah. Right. But, um, you know, the, one of the main characters, Peter Petrelli has the power. He's an empath, uh-huh. which he, he, or, you know, basically he, takes other people's powers he doesn't take them he like when he's around someone else right. he develops their power and then he has that power and so by the end of the series he has like all the powers well not by the end of the series but the end of like season one even right it's just got this ton of powers um and in anyone with a stopwatch at home how's paul doing on that 30 second description sure yeah 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 thank you that's <laughs> that, that's gonna add 30 seconds to this but so you know, here you have this character who has all these powers, who saved the world maybe like twice, and then he's like, you know what? I don't want to go around just trying to save the world. He becomes an EMT, you know, um, and he just goes around trying to save individual people, just kind of like doing stuff. Right now, I mean, he can also teleport and you know manipulate space time broadly and. Uh, uh, so there's there's a list of powers that like he could kind of do some other stuff also you know um but yeah i mean that's an example of someone who has this huge array of powers and decides to use them for something very specific but but something kind of constructive and for an individual person um i mean i was thinking like purple man from uh jessica jones mm-hmm. like he could be a, a great hostage negotiator oh yeah you know uh, or basically anyone with mind control, just like put the guns down and come outside. <laughs> like, I, I, okay, and now we'll talk. Like, yeah, I, I mean, in some ways, I think Purple Man, especially from Jessica Jones, um, is a great example of how I, I'm not fully on board with the the um, Spider Man's uh, uh, uncle uh, Uncle Ben's um, you know line of like with great power comes great responsibility. Right. Um, but I, I think there's an interesting version of it there that that Purple Man and the guy you're talking about there is that. Oh, Almost any of these powers can be used for, for lack of a better term, for good or evil, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and it raises interesting questions about, like, the way Purple Man is portrayed in Jessica Jones, I think, very well. I mean, he comes across as one of the most e- – one of the, like, the most scary and most evil characters in the Marvel Universe, um, which is pretty damn impressive in a way. And especially when you think about how small scale his plans are compared to, like, some of the supervillains we get. Um, right. But yeah, but that same power could be used in such incredibly different ways. Yeah, well, and I'd I'd say that I think Marvel actually kind of is lacking on scary villains. Yeah, I think that's true. You, you know, especially in the movies, like the 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 villains tend to be the good ones tend to be funny. Yeah, um, and they tend to be kind of straightforward. And Purple Man really isn't. You know, he's 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 um, he's legitimately scary, uh, and I think. Yeah, he, he. What were we talking about? Uh, <laughs> we got a little lost there. It's true. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, <laughs> he, he he. I mean, clearly, yeah. His his powers could be used for for good or evil. But I I think when when this was all started with a Peter Petrelli point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's not. That's we're we're that's that's past. Okay, we're, <laughs> we're moving on. Um, I I think when you say good or evil, like you maybe don't intend this but like i think that's sort of where that like great powers great responsibilities like there's this false dichotomy of good and evil i mean i don't even believe in good whatever but um but the the point that like there is neutral you know and and people can say like oh well if you're indifferent to you know bad things happening then you're part of that right um and that's sort of where the responsibility would come in yada 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 but at the same time, um, there was in in Buffy season six, right? Mm-hmm. Um, there's, you know, maybe it was earlier than that, but Willow has, you know, she has magic. And it's kind of asserted by the plot, you know, or by the worldview that whenever magic is used for a selfish reason, it's bad and right. like corrupting. And I hated that. That was my absolutely most hated plot thread um or not not like thre- yeah in in the entire series um and just because i just think that's a ridiculous notion that right. 
you know, you have some power and if you use it for your own gain, that that's inherently bad. I think that's dumb. And I think, <laughs> I mean, it, it just is. I find it offensive. Like, and th the thing is, if you use it for your own gain to someone else's detriment, yeah, like, see, I, I can buy that. And, and think, that's the, I, really the difference. I me. think that's the key. And I think, and, and, I mean, this is kind of like, you know, every intro, you know, first year college student who takes a philosophy class has tried to play around with that idea of that everything is inherently a selfish act because to ever try to do something nice for someone else is, you know, it makes you feel good. So it is a selfish act. Sure. We had that discussion on a New York City subway with, I think, a, a rabbi. Or <laughs> yeah, I remember that actually. In, in, in high school. Or <laughs> it was a great that. day. Um, it was. But I think the, the point, it, it's kind of similar to that discussion we had a while, uh, actually just last week, about um, – uh, like murder, like killing in cold blood versus like killing in self-defense, you know, right. and that when someone says daredevil shouldn't kill, you're equating those two things and they're very different. Mm -hmm. And I think to me saying like you can never use a power to benefit yourself is that same kind of equating because it's equating benefiting yourself in a way that doesn't necessarily do harm to anyone else versus benefiting yourself at the detriment to others, you know? Yes. And I think that that's where the line can be drawn. And, and, and in the case of Buffy, I think – I'm not exactly sure that he was trying to make that point. It's just that it, I think it was just a bit of lazy writing, um, which is unfortunate. But but I, but I think you're right because it, 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 it raises really interesting questions of, you know, if, if you have this power, do you have to use it only to help others? Especially because once you create a situation where you say, I have to help someone else. Mm-hmm. You now need a person who needs to be helped. Um, right, and true. in psychology, we call that codependence. Like that, mm -hmm. that's often a pretty unhealthy situation. Right. Um, and I think that's a – that's you know, I mean just – and you can look at that on a personal level or you can look at it like you know, America is a country that has great power. And so we feel a responsibility to go help other people like the people mm. of Vietnam. Um, hmm. You know, that doesn't always work out very well. Right. Um, and, and I say that a little bit like kind of as a joke but, but also somewhat seriously. Because I think that's the same – like to me, one of the most dangerous things for a superhero is to start – like you know, what would happen if crime was actually fixed in Gotham? You know, Right. Like, right. What the fuck would Batman do? Right. Because on the one but, hand, like you – and there are some stories where he does this. Like you know, he would say, I'll stop being Batman, and, and, yeah. and that's great. But I've heard some um, – as I, I've mentioned before, the guys on the, the DC On Screen podcast, which is one of my favorites um, – they brought up this question as a real critique of Dark Knight Rises, which is that, like, in that story, Batman is – Bruce Wayne is able to stop being Batman because there's no crime. You're right. But, but in most of the rest of the canon, it's been set up that, like, it, Bruce might have some real trouble doing that because it, it, it's not that Bruce wears the – this is actually a quote from them. It's not that Bruce wears the Batman suit. It's that Batman wears the Bruce Wayne suit, you know? And, and I, I kind of wonder, like, if, if crime is really fixed in Gotham – is Batman going to be happy just being Bruce Wayne, or is he going to need to go find some other city that still has crime? Um, mm. You know. Well, and then like, why wouldn't he find some other city that still has crime? Like, wouldn't that be actually kind of like a um, right a, an act of negligence? Yeah, I mean, if he has these great abilities to to fight crime, mm -hmm. like like you solved one city, great, okay, we got some other cities, right? You know, and I know they all have their own superheroes, like in in the DC <laughs> universe. Which, but, by the way, why do the people in the suburbs get so screwed? <laughs> like, what? Like they don't have any any superheroes? Yeah, like <laughs> I think they don't have crime either. I think that's the implication. <laughs> like everything's just fine, and they don't have any super villains either. I, I, right? I mean, I, I don't think there's a show to be done about this, but it was something I was thinking about while watching Arrow and the Flash and and Supergirl, and just how all of them are so tied to like I must save crime in my city. Yeah, know? my city, my <laughs> city. And and part of it's that like, well, why doesn't Bruce Wayne go stop? You know, crime in some other city if Gotham was fixed. Yeah, but yeah. also, like, what about the people who don't live in cities? Right. Why do superheroes only care about the urban? And I, I, I think that would be a great premise for a, <laughs> a, a show or a hero or whatever. Superheroes of the suburbs. <laughs> Let's write it. Or I like, like it. A, a mockumentary, you know, right. reality show. <laughs> but, but, but to get back to the, the question that we, we – that I think is actually a great topic that we sort of stumbled on by accident. <laughs> um, but, 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 you know, does a superhero need a person to save? Um, right. And, and, and what, what are the, you know, it, where are the potential problems? In uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's a, a good, a good question. I, I, I don't think there are 
really problems in that. I mean, there can be right. if if you say like, okay, let's say you decided you wanted to be a superhero and you had your your suit and you had your toys and you're like ready to go out. Where do you go? Yeah. Like, do you get a police scanner and then you show up places that things have been reported? Like, that's where the police are going to show up. Like, is that good? Like, do you show up and then try to keep the police from shooting people? Like, do you, you know, like, what do you do? Right. How do you find, you know, when they show Batman, like, dropping in on, like, muggers, which, you know, that's great. Like, especially in a very violent city where a mugging might often lead to murder or rape or, or whatever. Um, or at least just, you know, assaults like, like, um, you know, physical assault and sure, you know, but like, how does he know to be there? Like Superman like flies up and he like listens and, you know, Supergirl can kind of do the same thing, but it's like, you know, Arrow has like some thing that blinks on a computer or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> oh, there's a crime, you know, but like, how, how do you know where to go? And, um, if you don't know where to go. Like, are you going to go to the wrong spots a lot? Like, in right. Seattle, they there, there was this whole superhero movement, right? Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah, I kind of remember. It was just like, yeah. it was kind of vigilante, kind of like, but not even like fighting crime, but it was it was sort of like about, when I, well, actually, no, I, I don't fully remember, so why don't you tell me instead okay. of my senseless blathering? Um, <laughs> I think it was called, the they were called the Rain City Superheroes, or the Rain City Superhero Movement or whatever, and um, they basically went around and um like they had tasers or batons or whatever and they went around and like tried to make citizens arrests or, or kind of just be a presence and like try to i think it was more about deterring crime or like going out and if something happens then trying to help or whatever and of course the cops weren't crazy about it <laughs> to be sure <laughs> um but you know they did some things where they they helped people or stopped crimes and then there were also spots where uh it was they were accused of of um you know violence against people who weren't necessarily doing anything and so i i don't i don't have really good accounts and and i i don't know that whatever accounts i've read i there you know it's incomplete information and i'm sure it's biased by um the perspective of law enforcement but then also probably the perspective of people who are like like, how cool is that? Like, did, did, are they really, you know, doing something uh, useful? You know, um, like, I'm sure there are people who, like, wish there were superheroes, right? Right. Um, and so, you know, um, but I, I think the, the, the question there is, like, when you, you know, get ready and then you go out, like, where do you go? You know, um, and I think that's probably something that they, um, you know, had to contend with in terms of not necessarily knowing how to find the the places that they really want to be to try and stop things from happening that they well, don't want to happen. Well, I think absolutely and I think I think um and it's actually related to something I've thought about a lot over these topics. Um because I think it, part of it is just the knowledge, but part of it's also how do you or or do you think it's important to not let your your own personal biases affect what are the things you think are most important to go solve? Um, right. You know, one of the um, – and I'm only going back to the theology issue so much because – I kind I, of think you do though, but go ahead. Well, OK. But let me, let me set this up. I, I keep going back to the theology issue because I think it gives us an interesting way of thinking about the idea of people with great power because that's sort of mm -hmm. how a god is thought of. Um, right. But one of the other parts of that, of that kind of related to the theodicy stuff is like, you know, if, if people pray to god to say, you know, please, um, you know, cure my grandmother's cancer – once you accept the idea uh, – and I'm not saying that I do personally, but, uh, but uh, clearly a lot of religious people do. Once you accept the idea that sometimes God will answer that prayer, that God has the power to do that, hmm. you then have to ask yourself, well, why did God – obviously God doesn't answer all of those prayers because right. you know, people do die of cancer even when people pray. And so now you get the question of why does God pick and choose whose prayers to answer? Um, mm -hmm. And I, I imagine if I lived in Gotham, I, I can't imagine that Bruce Wayne stops every mugging. And right. every now and then I'd sort of wonder to myself, like, if I got mugged, why didn't Bruce Wayne solve mine, you know? And... Well, you'd probably be wondering why Batman didn't, unless well, okay, you yes, were no, Jason Gordon-Levitt's character, just like, I know you're Batman, you know? Right. But um, Yeah, exactly. I would probably be like, why didn't— But yeah, like, and, why not me, right? And, why? And, and, yeah, and, 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 and sometimes I think it's just because of bad information. 
and and Batman, I think this doesn't happen as often, but but certainly with some superheroes, you know, a villain will create a situation where well, well, actually, let me let me hold off on that one. Um, but because first, just like I find it hard to believe that you know, I'm sorry, I'm, let, me, let me give a little context for this. You know, one of the things we talk about with policing that is really problematic is when you know biases like racism influence what the cops do. You know, and and not even right. talking about like violence against black people, but you know. Police are – there's a lot of documentation that, like, police are generally going to be faster to respond to, to issues, you know, in a, in, a, in a what is understood to be more of a white neighborhood than a black neighborhood. You know, mm-hmm. there are things like that in terms of the ways that, that police and other th- – and firefighters and things like that value different lives in, in different ways. Um, and also, so like, economically, like e- a, economically a wealthier for sure. area. I mean, all of these factors. And, and part yeah. of it, you know – Part of it may just be personal. I mean, and, and part of it is also built in. Like there is, you know, you know, women and children first are the ones who are supposed to be rescued first. Right. Um, and, and we can argue about are these good or bad things, um, certainly in the cases of the racism stuff. And I, I would say even in the cases of the, um, you know, the, the women or children first, there, there's some ethical problems. Um, and, 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 and I think that's one of the first things that I want to ask myself about a superhero is are they br- – do they have those same biases and is that a problem? Right. Well, so I think there's a difference between public and, you know, private action or personal actions, kind of, um, where when you have a a service that's being paid for by the people, and it's not provided evenly, right, that's immediately problematic, right? Whereas, if you have an individual saying, I'm gonna go and help these people, Unless they're saying, well, I'm not going to help those people because, like, I don't like them or whatever. Right. Um, I, I have a hard time having a hard time with that, you know? Right. Like, mostly because it's like, well, okay, Bruce Wayne, you know, you're brilliant and you're rich. Like, why are you fighting crime? Why are you stopping muggers instead of being a doctor or instead of being a politician? Like, why doesn't he run for president, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, and I think you're right. Like, in someone like Bruce Wayne – I like I, I like the way you started there. Of you know, if if you're appointed by the government, then you have more of a responsibility in that regard. So so would you say that Superman, when Superman is appointed by the UN as sort of an official global guardian, does mm-hmm. he now have more of a responsibility to you know to to not have those biases affect him? Absolutely, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, he and I think he at the beginning of that episode he says something about truth, justice, and. Then he substitutes something for the American way because that's like that, that's like his 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 catchphrase, right? Right. Is like it has America in it. But in when he's working for the UN, he's like, well, not just for America, but for the whole world, basically. And um, I think that you know, there's this idea of um, what is it like moral proximity or whatever, um, where like in theory, and this I don't necessarily really agree with this but that the closer you are to something kind of the more responsibility you have for trying to help those people right. you know like you have more responsibility to help your neighbor than the person across the street you have more pers- you know responsibility to help the people in your city than the people in you know farther out in your country more responsibility to help the people in your country than the people in the rest of the world and I guess more responsibility to help humans than aliens or whatever, right. you know. Um, and I, I, I don't really buy into that, but I, I do. I can understand some upsides of it. Like you're probably in the best position to help the people closest to you and the people you know the best. Right. I mean, right? I think part of it is, especially, yeah. Like I think there is an element of like kind of logistics to you know, like yeah, the United yeah. States is better equipped to help Haiti after a hurricane. Because of our ability to, um, you know, to get supplies there easier, and also we have a, a large Haitian population in the United States, we can better connect, you know. Right. But on something like Syrian refugees, I think for us to say like, well, you know, those countries that are closer have more of a, a moral need to take those in. On something like that, I'm definitely more where you are. Like, and I, I think part of it is just because it's the logistics thing, you know. It's and and yeah. And I, I think this is where you're going. If not, tell me I'm wrong. But like. For Superman, that doesn't exist because he right, is exactly. proximate to everything by yeah. you know by his flying power. Yeah, he can get there rather instantly. Whereas Batman, kind of like you know, he's got to get in the Batwing, he's got to make sure it's fueled up, like he's got to fly there. 
Um, and yeah, he doesn't have quite the same, you know, teleporting like powers. But then when he's in the Justice League and they have teleporters, then all of a sudden he does and he does stuff all over the world and on other planets. And although he doesn't go to the other planets that often, but, you know, and that's like the, the Green Lanterns. Once you get to the Green Lanterns, like they're, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy. No, that's not it. But um, <laughs> I think they work for the Guardians. <laughs> right. Um, but not the Guardians of the Galaxy, but like the, the whole universe, like they're all they're going all over. And so it's like, do they have more responsibility for Earth? Because a few of them are from the you know the ones from earth right. or like they're actually in charge of like a whole sector right which isn't always including earth and um yeah i do think like when you when you talk about syria you know it i mean i think the united states should take in like all the refugees right you know and i think what germany is doing is great and obviously there are problems that can arise from that and you have to deal with those when they come up and maybe think about them a little bit ahead of time but well, cause... i i do think it makes more sense for places that are physically closer to accept more people or just if everywhere had open borders, more people would go to the places that are closer. Right. Well, and I think because it also becomes a question of not just moral proximity, but who has the, the power and the ability, you know, yes. like yeah. Green Arrow, like he can shoot arrows at things. And, and right. Oliver Queen has a lot of money, but like yeah. he doesn't have anywhere near the power to like. So there are some disasters that even if they happened in Star City, probably Superman's better equipped to save them, even though Oliver ha is like more physically closer, you know? Right. Like if there's an earthquake, what's he going to do? Shoot an arrow at it? Yeah, like, exactly. in, like, you know, I mean, it's it's th there are certain. Yeah. Different people have different capabilities. And whether we're talking about superheroes or, or the real world, um, I think finding problems that your capabilities are well suited towards is is a useful thing to do to be sure and I, and actually uh, and there's a, there's one other aspect of this and this is the thing I, I kind of alluded to before that i think is interesting is what happens when a person a superhero loves is in danger right because obviously this is something that the villains love to like you know play you know to 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 put into you know um, you know, to, to, uh, there's that great line from the, the first Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movie where, where Green Goblin says, you know, that uh, some sadistic villain is going to make – is going to force you to make a terrible choice. Right. Um, and it's to either save the woman he loves or to, um, you know, suffer the children, to save this busload of children. Mm -hmm. And I'm always a little bit annoyed because in the movies, the, the hero always figures out a way. To... I can think of an exception. I know. I can think of a couple exceptions. And those are the ones I think are great actually because right. I, I – I, to me, I think there's a, an, a really interesting question of is it okay for a superhero to, like, save the person they – like, because to go back, for a cop to, like – or, you know, one of the things they're supposed to do is to put aside their personal, like, things in terms of that. Right. A cop who's on duty, if they have a chance to save a bunch of people or to save, like, a personal relation to them, like, they're supposed to save the bunch of people. Yeah, but and, they're not gonna, like, for the most part. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, more often than ha – like – Often, like this is why, like you know, you recuse your. This is why you know, like right. a president doesn't make that. You 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 remove yourself from the equation. Um, right. But yeah, what do we think of a superhero who does that? Like, what should a superhero do in that situation? I mean, I think they're gonna do what they want to do. You know, I mean, and I I'm not when it's not someone's job to save people. Like, I'm not going to. I don't know. I, I don't even think when it is someone's job. I think if you're in – so first of all, these like ridiculous villain situations don't actually – like we don't have those. Right. They're, they Which always actually, do seem kind of contrived. Like – what? OK. Not to like come up with ideas for terrorists, but like <laughs> <laughs> I'm just surprised like no one's actually done something like what the Joker does in um, Dark Knight, you know? Right. Where – I mean he does set up something like that and – Batman does have to choose and like maybe it doesn't work out so well, you right. know, and, um, you know, it's in, in, in real life, if somebody's forced with the choice of saving one person or five people or something like that, I'm going to try really hard not to judge them for whatever decision they make, because usually it's not like, okay, you've got five minutes on the clock, decide, you know? Right. And it's it's not like you have a day, go, okay, discuss it, think about it, you know? It's usually, it's like, um, okay, it, something's happening and you react. And so I'm, I'm not going to, not going to judge someone really for how they react in that situation. And if, if they choose to save the people they know instead of the people they don't know, like, 
that's what they do, right? Um, I, I guess here's the way I would think of it is to me it's kind of directly proportional to how much sort of public respect and adulation and thus kind of public approval, you know? Mm-hmm. To me, someone like Batman who for the most part operates in the shadows is still considered to be for all intents and purposes a criminal and it, you know might be loved by the people to some extent but it's certainly not like given government approval by any means you know i, I kind of Except like sometimes sort of by gordon yeah but. somewhat and and they're only grudgingly and gordon is always trying to get him to be more official well it really depends on the story because yeah, like okay, that's true adam west batman it's like there's a phone that rings in the yeah no that's there. definitely true but yeah but i would say uh, to me the more that there is that phone the more that like to me right. someone like like once Superman works for the UN or even like once Spider-Man is kind of like getting, you know, or the Flash is getting like public rallies right. and stuff like that. Yeah. I do think there's more of that responsibility. Um, mm-hmm. And I will – because we praised the movie earlier, I feel even more of a moral duty to point out a problem with Zack Snyder movie. Um, but this is actually an issue I've wanted to talk about for a while. In the Zack Snyder uh, Batman versus Superman, there's a moment when, um, you know – this the, the the horrible thing that Luke Le, that Lex Luthor has created is um you know you know looks like it's unstoppable and 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 clearly going to do horrific damage and possibly kill thousands or millions of people and Lois Lane's in danger right. and Superman basically stops fighting and possibly leaves Wonder Woman and Batman to die to go save Lois Lane for a little while. Mm-hmm. I hated that scene. Um, age because I thought it was just like cheap manipulative storytelling, but right. also because I'm sitting there going like. No, Superman, you have to let Lois die in this moment. Like, because even put aside your responsibility to, like, the world, like, there's, you know, you're leaving Batman and Wonder Woman to fight alone, and they might not make it without you. Um, Yeah, that'd be fine. (laughs) I mean, yeah, once we sort of remember that they have plot armor, of course they're going to be fine. But, like, if, if if you try to say, like, in that world, he doesn't know that, to me, that's a really problematic decision he made. Mm hmm. Eh. <laughs> you just don't care. I can say that of all the things that bothered me in that movie, <laughs> that wasn't one of them. Okay. Like, I think they have some lengthy conversation at that point. Yes. That you know, no, no, that, that probably yeah. bothered me. Yeah, it wasn't just the saving her. It was also, like, you know, making sure she's okay and all that. Yeah, Which, you know, yeah. good things, but... Yeah, I mean, he should be able to do that in, like, you know, three shakes of a, a, a doomsday's tail or something. I don't know, <laughs> but... It, what didn't she have the the thing that ended up killing the the kryptonite thing wasn't she there or i don't know yeah i mean yeah okay so that's all a disaster um but um as far as leaving wonder woman and batman on their own like they're superheroes <laughs> like yeah. you have to trust each other that i i i get the whole i mean the whole thing was kind of like that first scene early on where he goes and saves her when apparently like CIA agent Jimmy Olsen had gotten them all into a mess. And apparently there's some other bad stuff that happened there. Like a bunch of people got killed because of that. And that was because he was trying to protect her or whatever. Um, Yeah. That also happens. I think that's supposed to be a more compelling way of raising that issue. Yeah. Like, and I, I think that was supposed to be kind of part of the point. Um, But and also, like, this isn't exactly a movie where Superman has universal adulation, you Oh, know? to be sure. I mean, that, well, he has huge adulation by some, and that's presented as problematic. Um, right, and, 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 and is vilified by others. And, and I think, uh, honestly, I think that the, the movie did s- come from some very interesting ideas and just didn't, didn't handle them Oh, to be well. sure. I mean, I, I got into a debate recently with someone who was arguing that Fantastic Four was a worse movie. Than, than this was and, and and my point was sort of like i expected a lot less of fantastic Four. you know right. part of why this movie frustrated me so much is that i i wanted it to be so much better um but, yeah. but, but just I, go- mean, I didn't even think it was terrible i just thought it was mediocre and i hated it because of right. how much i like batman <laughs> and because it was not a portrayal of batman that but, matched my expectations sure yeah no and there there i'm definitely with you um but but just going back to that question like let's let's take another example which it happens on on Arrow all the time, um, but happens in a number of other superhero situations. Supervillain has an evil plan. Superhero has a chance to stop the evil plan. But supervillain – like the superhero has caught the supervillain, but the supervillain has a gun to the person the superhero loves. Right. And basically it's 
you can stop me from doing my evil plan, but if so, I'm going to kill your, the person you love. Right. Every single time the superhero says, okay, I put my gun down, I put my powers down, you know, mm-hmm. I put my bow down, you can go off, continue being a supervillain, probably get me and my loved ones in mortal danger again later, but I'm going to save the person I love right now instead of stopping you from doing your evil. Are you okay with that too? Honestly, I don't care. Like, yeah. the, the, just because like, those sit, those are, it's so bad. <laughs> the- uh, like, that's such bad story. To, I hate it so much. And it's, it's so deliberate, yeah. you know? It's like the end of Saving Private Ryan, spoiler alert, um, when Matt Damon's character is like, am I a good man? The, the older version, just like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, why are you doing this? <laughs> like, like, to the storyteller, you right. know? Like, and and it, it just, it's always so contrived that, you know, like, no, you should have killed the villain, yeah. probably. You know, that's like usually the thing. And I, I, I mean, yeah, I understand. The the difference to me is like, and this is a little odd coming from a poker player, I guess. Um, but I do think there's a difference between, okay, I'm either going to kill one million people that you don't know, or I'm going to kill one person that you care about, right? Right. And... I'm either going to kill one person you care about and or I'm going to risk the lives of one million people you don't know. Right. And that kind of lack of certainty, you could say, well, if it's 50 percent likely to kill the million people, then that's like definitely killing 100, you know, 500 million people. Right. Right. Just like expected value wise. <laughs> but like 500,000. Kind of like, but yeah. Hmm? Did uh, I go. say 500 million? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So typo or speak up. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Yeah, so five hundred thousand. We, we, this is superhero ethics, not superhero math. But go on. Um. Anyway. <laughs> uh, so the, the 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 point being that, like, I find it a little weird to try to. It's like you know, it's risk, right? When you let right. them go, there's risk, and sometimes there is a certain amount of certainty. Um, in terms of them definitely doing bad things that will definitely hurt people. Well, I, uh-huh. I think it's risk, but I also think it's the idea of like what's in front of you versus what's abstract. Um, yes. And, and I agree with you that it is terrible storytelling and it's very contrived and it drives me crazy too. Manipulative. Manipulative. Yeah. That's the word. That's but, the but, 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 I, but part of, I think, why it drives me crazy is because, yeah, most of the time I think the person's making the wrong choice. And I think part of it is, and this is both to the audience but also to the character, there's that idea of like the person who's right in front of you who you can see and whose name you know <laughs> And who probably you love, but it might just be like Joe the Milkman. But still, right. that's a person who you see versus like 500,000, you know? I mean like right. – and this is something that's well documented and um, you know, advocacy groups are very, are very intentional about using this. You know, like if we tell people that like 500,000 Syrians are dying in this terrible situation, it's, it's easy to forget. It's a lot easier for people to look past that than it is – that picture of that one child who was like, you know, injured in the bombing or like the yeah. story of one person. Yeah. If you show the little, the little boy in Aleppo, like is right. a lot more effective at um, conjuring feelings than, Oh, a right. half million people, half a million. Well, that's less than a million. And, and, that's like, you know, but more than five. Right. And, like, and, and that's both important. And, and that, that can be a motivational tool, but mm-hmm. it's also really, pro- and that's also really problematic when it becomes the, the basis of ethical decision-making, you know, because it's, and, and, that, and in some ways that's, it's kind of that racial bias we talked about before of like people who you identify with are less abstract by definition. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and so like, if it's a person you love or it's a person who's like you or it's a person who shares experience with you, you're going to be more affected by the thought of their death. Um, and, and so I, 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 I believe that a lot of these superheroes probably would save their loved ones, but I think that's really problematic. And I, I just – I kind of wish more story that, – that it wouldn't be so assumed that that's always – right. in, re- in some ways I feel like I wouldn't be quite as bothered by that plot point. If we saw more of the characters either in the moment or beforehand or after thinking about is that a plot point they would – you know, like if, if Flash always did it but Arrow didn't and that was something mm-hmm. the two of them talked about and argued about. Like that right. could be – there could be some great storytelling. Yeah. But I think you're right. The way it's done now of we assume the villain is always going to save the person they love or save the person they know. The hero. Yeah, the hero yeah. Um, instead of a group of people, then it – 
it, it, it's not it's not just bad ethics it's terrible storytelling mm-hmm. yeah yeah it's it's fatiguing yeah just <laughs> seeing the same decision all the time and that it's you know that the 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 result is typically so predictable right you know um and you know i i do think the idea of being able to relate to people i i i I don't know. I I think it's really strange. Well, maybe just sad and unfortunate that people feel the need to relate to someone in order to have empathy for them. Like I've, I've seen people say that like you need to relate to someone to have empathy, but I don't, I don't think that's true. Um, I mean, I think that's kind of a, a failure, you know? Right. Um, I, I do think that being able to relate to someone is, a natural way to be immediately empathetic. Right. But it's not like it's the only way, you know, to be sure. And I, I think that that, I, I think it's important for us to think about that. I, I, I would, I would say though, a little bit on the other side, I don't, I don't think that empathy is necessarily a bad thing. You know, I mean like, I, what? No, 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 what? no. I don't mean <laughs> that empathy full stop. I'm saying that this very particular kind of empathy. Um, yeah. Like for example, you know, Bruce Wayne, yeah. for, for very mm. obvious reasons, I, I just want to be really clear. I was talking about empathy as being a very good thing. Oh yeah, no, to be sure. Yeah. No, no, I, I agree with you that I, I, I'm kind of going a little bit on a sideways. Point. Okay. Because, uh, because my only thing is like to me, Bruce Wayne obviously has a deep empathy for orphans. You know, right. he identifies with them more than anyone else. And so, yeah. if you say that Bruce Wayne is going to use his money to to build a home for orphans instead of to build a home for you know domestic violence victims. I have absolutely no problem there, you know, because right. I feel like that's something where he's not saying any other issue is bad. He's just saying this is the issue that really hits me because this is the issue that I went through. So, of course, I'm going to want to support that more than anything else, you yeah. know. But it's when – if it, in the situation where Bruce Wayne is like, well, I can save this orphan as Batman. I can save this orphan or I can save these ten other people. That's when I'm – that's more when I'm like, ah, oh, here I'm starting to have a problem, you know. Yeah, and I'd say that that either or is exactly the sort of contrived thing that drives me nuts. But that right. you know, if he you know were breaking up a mug, he's like, "Wait, are you an orphan?" No, <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> and then he leaves. You know, it's yeah. like that. Obviously, would there be a problem there? <laughs> like, you know, um, or if he's like just stalking like all the orphans in Gotham, and like those are the only people he intercedes on behalf of, like that would be like. Uh, all right, what are you doing, Bruce? This, you know. this is probably not often thought of within the um, uh, superhero uh, genre, but have you ever seen the um, Gilbert and Sullivan uh, operetta Pirates of Penzance? Uh, I performed it in oh. <laughs> the equivalent of eighth grade. <laughs> well, you, you probably know where I'm going then, that, that one of the, the, the plot lines in that fantastical, fantastic, hysterically funny, and, and obviously very satirical and silly um, uh, operetta is that you have this group of pirates who are all orphans, and they right. have made a promise that they will never harm other orphans. And right. Word of this gets out, and so every ship that they ever try to take over always immediately tells them that they're completely peopled by orphans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you know, there, there, Bruce Wayne could be happy, but um, right, yeah, he would do okay there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um. So we're at about an hour. Anything else we want to say on this? Um. Nope. This wound up not being a grab bag. Um. Thank you, um, Carl. Um, you gave us actually a full topic for a good hour, so this was great. Oh, I do have actually one one thing to add. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Um, the the supervillain who I think would be most uh, helpful at the moment in our real world problems is Weather Wizard. Yeah, yeah, that would be kind right? of awesome. I mean, that dude could do some good. Uh, or anyway. even just like, could Iceman do something about like global warming? That uh, might be a little bit. I don't, it's not. It's not that simple. Okay. Because that, it's, it's climate change. It's not, you know. Yeah, that's true. Too. I mean, it could probably help lower, I don't <laughs> know, make a ton of, uh, refreeze the polar ice caps or whatever. But, you know, there's a lot of complicated factors. And Weather Wizard could deal with all of them in a holistic fashion. This is true. This is true. Yeah. So if anyone out there is um, building, um, uh, uh, is, is taking a break from building your weather machine to listen to our podcast, think about how you could use your weather machine to deal with global warming. We would really yeah, appreciate yep. it. Get back on that. I actually think if you solve climate change, we would bring you on as a guest on this podcast. Well, I mean, there, we have a list of guests that we have to get to first, but <laughs> you, you I like, think eventually, yes, definitely, we can definitely. make time. Um, so let's wrap up. Um, thank you, everybody, for um, listening to this podcast. Um, 
If you like this podcast, please tell us on Twitter. Please tell us on Facebook. You can find us on both at Superhero Ethics. Um, if you have thoughts, let us know. Um, you can subscribe on iTunes at Superhero Ethics Podcast. You can also find us on SuperheroEthics.com um, and email us at SuperheroEthics at gmail.com um, or you can email me at MatthewWestFox at gmail.com. Let us know what you think. Um, as we always say, we love this discussion. Obviously, we, we got a lot out of um, uh, uh, the comment that was left. We'd love to hear more. Leave a review for us on iTunes. Tweet at us. Um, let us know what you're thinking. Um, Paul, uh, what do you want to say in closing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Zen Madman out. <laughs> Zen Madman out. Superhero ethics out. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.